Hey guys, so I'm back. Um, I just got finished done uh, making my lunches for work. So I wanted to address, um, so I talked to still some people that are inside and I was kind of just doing a little search on Governor Evers and um, his take on our correctional system in Wisconsin because there's a lot of issues. There's staffing issues, there's mistreatment, food, it's disgusting in certain places. And when I say disgusting, I'm talking about Wapan and um, Green Bay Correctional, which are two of the four maxes, which I think now they've changed Portage to a medium. I have to double check, I keep hearing that. That was a max. Um, so what's going on in Green Bay, because I talk to people in Green Bay, I have people in Wapan and I will be reaching out because I noticed that on November 9th, um, Governor Evers and the Secretary of DOC went to Wapan to address the issues of what's going on and their issues is the safety of their, first they say, their staff and then prisoners in, or people in their care. Um, <laughs> so the way they handle situations is they would prefer to lock people in. You're not, I think when people hear prisons is you're locked up, you're locked in your room all the time. That's not the case. Even in a max, they let you out. You can still, there's options to go to school, work, um, and there's other stuff you can do. Um, but when they start to lock the institution down because they want to get on some petty shit or vindictive shit or they want to use the excuse, well, there's too many fights going on. Well, there's fights going on because you are not giving anybody constructive outlets. Um, you got them in a nasty ass environment like Green Bay. So Tony Evers was just up there two days ago. I got the phone call. So this individual called me and told me that Tony Evers had been up there. They had locked everybody in. This article I'm reading um, when it's talking about Wapan is talking about that he talked to um, correction officers, institu institution staff, and individuals in correction care. Now in Green Bay, my understanding is he did not talk to any inmates uh, at all. And I think that's the main thing he should be doing, is he should be randomly pulling individuals out and speaking to them and finding out what's going on. Because let me tell you something, correctional staff are going to cover for each other. I have talked to correctional staff that are like, man, this is shitty. I can't be in this environment. They treat you guys like shit. Yet you don't say nothing. How many times do we go, how, let's, let's go back. How many people would actually say something if they see an injustice? I know that people look like, well, they're locked up, you know, their rights have been taken and they deserve what they get in there. No, that's not the case because every single person isn't a piece of shit in there. They're still human beings. Your tax money is paying for people to work here that are mistreating other human beings. And then if you want to go so far as what if it was somebody you knew? Um, whether a brother, a, a child, um, an adult, um, you got to think like that. You got to take yourself out of the box. It's so easy for us to kind of like, uh, well, it's not affecting me. Yes, I'm not locked up anymore, but I still know plenty of people are. And having been locked up 16 years, I know what goes on. And this is a, a very powerful subject for me because I've dealt with a lot of shitty ass staff that come there and use manipulation and power trips and then do shit like this. They get into positions like wardens and deputy wardens and security directors. And then they think they can treat other human beings like shit because they feel like we don't have no rights or don't deserve them and they wonder why they act like nobody can get word to the streets nobody can get help from family out there that's gonna people are gonna stand up and say wait a minute i'm getting these phone calls or emails and this is what's going on up there what the fuck is going on or they call up there you know what i mean so <laughs> They have a big rodent problem up in Green Bay. The last time I was in Green Bay was my first incarceration. I left January 5th of 2010. That was the last time I was up there. All this stuff that's going on now, that was never 
a issue up there. I mean, they had their fights, but it wasn't like that. We weren't locked down like they are locked down now. It's loud as fuck when he calls. Every day, all day, all night, he says it's like there. there's no sense of any sort of peace or nothing. They don't control shit there anymore. They can't keep control. It's almost like uh, they've given up and now we just come to a job and now the inmates given up. You treat us like shit. Why should we give a fuck? So <laughs> he, I, when I asked him if um, anybody had talked to him, he said no. I think he's in the cell cell hall. <clears throat> And he'd clean, so he was out and they were telling him, oh, clean up, grab a mop and sweep or whatever, make it look good. Why? It's too late now, now you wanna, now you wanna make it look good? And then um, I was told then, <laughs> when they aired it, that he was up there, they used old pictures of the prison to make it look clean and, I don't want to use the word inviting because obviously prison isn't inviting, but kind of painting a picture to um, the community that, no, you know, this is, we have staff, they use the excuse staff shortage is why we do this. Staff shortage, I've been 16 years, let me tell you something, I could clean your prisons up, every single prison. You have jobs that you don't even need. Tell me why you need a unit manager, a, uh, a captain and a lieutenant running one unit when a unit manager is pretty much the consistent of a captain they're just pretty much in civilian clothes and they come in they run the unit so <laughs> I don't understand um, I don't understand they got overpopulation they've had short staff shortage for 10 years every couple of years you see them do a news article about how they're about 100 more nobody wants to work for the doc who wants that bullshit whether they worried about something happening to them by an inmate or they already know what's going on and they don't want no part of it. But then that goes back to how is you as a human being go to work every day seeing this? Like, okay, they're living in this, but you're going to work and you're not seeing rodents run around or you're not hearing them or you're not seeing the disgusting shit that's going on and you say nothing? I guess that 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 just really <laughs> blows my mind when I hear this stuff. Because, like, I've been to a lot of places, mold and shit like that, and people get sick off that stuff. You got rodents running around. People get sick off that stuff. There's no reason. I just don't think they'll ever be able to control the population because they already did ERP at most places so guys could get out. But as fast as they're completing that program and getting out, they're coming back or they're moving more people in. So... How do you stop the cycle? How do you make changes so that taxpayers aren't paying all this money for DOC overtime? That you, I mean, these guys are working 16 hour days, five days a week at some places, or they're going from one prison and they're getting paid to drive the mileage to another prison and then work that prison. Plus they're probably getting housing if they went far enough also. So all this money just to go work an eight or 12 hour shift. It doesn't make sense to me. What I, what should happen is they definitely need to shut um, Wapan and Green Bay down. They definitely need to start looking at moving a mass amount of inmates out, which then would go to my subject is you need to be able to make sure that you have resources, resources available, how they can get these resources, that the probation officers are also helping and should know, like, Okay, you need housing, contact these people. You need food stamps or whatever, contact these people. Jobs, contact these people. Except you have some people's POs that don't care. I think a majority of the people that I talk to and mine, they're decent. They want us to succeed. They want us to do well out here. They don't want us to sit here and have to do paperwork to where they have to send us back. Um, and then you have the other ones that they just don't give a shit. You get out of line one way, I'm revoking you. What the fuck kind of shit is that? So it's just a big issue all throughout DOC. Starting 
within. And when he told me about um, Tony Evers coming, I get that now they want to address the issue of overpopulation and understaff and but what are you gonna do you gonna put more money into the prison system to fix it up okay how is that gonna make any changes it's not so I think a lot of my videos are gonna be um, like I had said in my first video it'll be a lot of different things but Prison and bringing awareness to what's going on in prison. Um, eventually, I will start doing interviews with guys who have been in and gotten out and may have went back in and gotten out. Um, just to kind of get sight on what's going on, why is this happening, um, what changes can be made as far as resources. Because I've been out here almost two years. In a month, in a month tomorrow, I will be out here two years. It's possible. Don't get me wrong. Some days are harder than others. I have a hard time keeping track of bills um, and that type of shit. It just, and it gets overwhelming with, especially with everything that's happened in the last seven months. Um, that's a lot for one individual to take. And I'm still, you know, fighting and trying to get back on track, but I'm still out here fighting, trying to get back on track. There's other means and ways. Had this been 10 years ago, my impulse, I'd have been done what I had done always in the past. I'd have been locked up already. So this is why I'm trying to show that if people want to change, they can. If people get sick and tired of the same bullshit, the same lifestyle, the same job, make changes. You'll get fed up. That's what happened to me. I was in such a financial bullshit a month ago that... I sat down and thought, like, damn, if this would have been 10 years ago, you would have been plotting burglaries. Like, literally, you would have been out there already. And I was just proud of the fact that that wasn't the first thing that I went and thought of. You know what I mean? So that's to show that people can change if they're sick and tired of the lifestyle. Which brings me back to the staff. If you're sick and tired of the lifestyle, and you really are, humane people say something. What do they, they're going to take your job? Okay, well now you sue their asses. There's ways around stuff. You don't just not speak up because, because it's affecting you too. Because if you got to come work eight hours and you got to deal with inmates bullshit because they're upset, they're mad because they just seen a rodent run around or you know what I mean? Or you guys are coming in with attitudes or whatever. Come on now. Why, why would you think nothing would pop off? You know, you got to give respect to give it or get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I was just, you know, I was happy to hear that Tony Evers went. Now I just want to really see if something's going to be done and quickly. You went to show, I mean, I don't really follow Tony Evers like that. I don't really get into politics or, you know, how he's doing. Like I said, I focus on prison because I was there. So I know what gets swept under the rug or what gets spoken or the mistreatment and that people say stuff and sometimes it's it's covered up. You know, staff's always going to stick up for staff, but you're always going to have one or two that they quit, but you're quitting and saying nothing. Like I <laughs> I would I would really be like hyped if one staff member or a couple just came out and were like, this is what's going on. I had to leave this environment. You know, this is what's going on to the inmates in there. I couldn't put up with it no more. Um, when I tried to bring it up, I got shut down. Stuff like that. Because and that's just proving that these people in there are trying to cover up the inhumane and the bullshit. I just think we need to do better as people. We need to be more aware. We're at 8 billion people now as of New Year's Day. 8 fucking billion people. If we're all selfish and stubborn and don't give a fuck, what kind of world is that? For real. And I know some of you think like, it doesn't affect me. But it does. You pay taxes in this state. It does affect you. 
and I'm sure most of you know somebody that's been locked up or you've been locked up or obviously you know me I've been locked up so you know it's it's a lot that goes with being locked up I definitely wanted to talk about um, this and Tony Evers coming to the two maxes now I really want to see if changes are going to be made um, I definitely going to reach out to people in Wapan and figure out what's going on there because I've always heard that these two prisons they've been trying to close and shut down but they're not going to do that where are they going to send all them where are they going to send all them individuals there's nowhere to put them you're not going to build another prison this state's never going to go for that there's no money for that and you don't need it you need to start going in. You need to start looking at everybody's cases. Anybody with a drug conviction, you need to get them help or get them out because you're wasting time with drug conviction, especially marijuana cases. That's just bogus. What are you going to do when that shit's legal? But changes definitely need to be made. I think we as a community need to speak up more and get on um, the DOC and Tony Evers about making changes because it does affect us. Maybe not directly, but it does indirectly. Financially, we're paying taxes. Um, and some of us know people inside. And you wouldn't want that happening to somebody, you know, especially your child. If he, he or she got in trouble, um, you would stand by them and, you know, want to make sure that they're okay. So, you know, that's what I just wanted to bring up. I hope everybody's having um, a happy new year. Um, it's day three into January. I don't feel any different. I don't feel any older. <laughs> um, but, you know, I hope everybody's resolutions are, um, they're sticking to them. I know some people uh, fall off right away. Um, I know somebody that's on my Facebook. She's like, I'm going to stop smoking. Yay. Um, cigarettes. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's just what I wanted to talk about was the DOC and Tony Evers. Um, I hope you all are well. Thank you for joining me and have a great night.